Thank you for watching this video today. I'm so glad you could join me. I run a small used appliance store in Ohio, and today I wanna to talk to you about fixing a Maytag washing machine that won't spin. We're going specifically after the issue of it not spinning, and we're gonna tear the thing apart to try to give you about four or five or six different ways to look at the machine and try to hopefully help you fix it. And the video is focused entirely on it not spinning. If you have an issue where it won't drain or spin, that is possibly a different problem altogether. So we're going mainly after the components dealing with the spin mode. With all the fixes in this video, we should have about a 90% chance of getting this machine fixed. It's not going to include every single thing, but definitely the most popular or most likely culprits. We're gonna show you how to identify them, not necessarily replace every part because there are tons of videos on the internet about how to replace them, but we wanna see why this is not working and get to fixing it. So let's begin. The very first thing that we want to do is move the washing machine to access the rear of the unit so we can remove the washing machine lid and pull out the service manual. Once we can get behind the unit, we want to remove three screws that secure the lid to the chassis of the machine. These are quarter inch screws that you'll need a screwdriver to remove and make sure to take off the metal harness plate. Now we're going to move the washing machine back to its normal position and ensure something is behind the unit to support the washer top when we remove it. To remove the top of the washer, you will pull the washer top towards the front of the washer, then lift up, then push backwards towards the rear of the unit. This will unhook the washer from the tabs that keep it secured, and when you pivot the top, it needs to rest on the two small hooks pictured here. Also note the lid will probably fall backwards and hit the console, so make sure that the lid is taped or secure it with your hands while you roll the lid backwards. Once the top of the washer has been lifted up, we can now get the manual out by pushing the tub towards the back and then reaching in and pulling the service sheet from the hidden compartment. This will contain all the tests and info that you you would want specific to your washing machine. Some older or newer Maytags could have a slightly different command than mine, so if something doesn't quite work that you're shown in the video, the manual you have can help you. Once you have the manual, you can return the top of the washing machine to its normal position. Now we're going to search the washing machine for spin-related error codes. To do this, make sure the machine is plugged in with no lights or modes displayed. I usually spin the knob counterclockwise till it's directly facing up. From here, you're going to turn the dial three times clockwise or to the right, one to the left, then one to the right, and it will enter diagnostic mode by all the lights flashing. If you want more info and options about this special mode, make sure to watch the video where we dissect all these options in depth on the pop-up card or the description below. One turn to the right will take us to the error code mode once we press the start button. Lights will begin to flash telling us we are in fact in the error mode. By turning the dial clockwise once, it will begin a flash code sequence. This will tell us what error code the machine may have regarding why it will not spin. To understand the codes, you need to look at which green lights, if any, are illuminated and the code is always two letters and numbers. If the first green light is on, the code is for the letter F and any other lights on need to be added together for the number. If the first light is off but other additional lights are on, then the numbers are for the E code. You put these together and your service booklet will tell you which code it's for. The codes generally have not changed in 10 years, so we are looking for the following codes that would cause the washer not to spin. The F0E5 code could stop the unit from spinning fully. I've already made a video about testing this and you can find it in the description below. The F5 code involves the lid lock. It could be E1, 2, or 3, and generally these codes tell you the lid lock is not working right and it does likely need replaced. The F7, E1, or E5 code is for the shift actuator failing or not working properly, and it's probably the most common thing involved with the unit not spinning, and I'll show you how to test it a few ways in just a little bit. The F7, E6 code would suggest that the motor has died or the capacitor that runs the motor has gone bad. This code is quite rare, but it would definitely cause this kind of washer to stop spinning altogether. The final code is involving the spin, which is F7, E7, which is also rare. This one means the basket is not moving at the proper speed, and either something is stuck in the basket, or more likely, the belt and pulley system is not working properly. You can rotate the knob clockwise four times to display more codes, then when all the lights flash in order, you can press and hold the start button to clear all the codes. This can help because if any problematic code will just reappear if the washer fails a test as we go through the rest of the video. Once you've pressed and held for a few seconds, the washer is now reset back to normal operations and we can begin with a list of things to test and fix. The first thing that we want to do is check the hub, so let's open up the lid of the washer with nothing in it. Without the machine on, spin the wash plate at the bottom of the tub simply with your hand. 
Does it move the entire tub like you're seeing, or does it move itself and spin by itself? If it does, the hub or wash plate are bad and are stripped out. You'll need to get the plate off with a socket wrench, and I do have other videos showing how to get it off, as it could be difficult. The reason this could cause your washer not to spin is that the machine actually spins the plate, which sends the clothes flying to the sides of the tub, but it doesn't actually spin the wash basket, which would get your clothes dry. Next, we're going to take a Torx screwdriver bit and remove the striker that has to be in place to lock the washer lid. This part is dangerous, so be very cautious. Once the striker has been taken out of the wash lid, put it into the lid lock. This will allow you to activate the spin mode to visually inspect the wash basket when it attempts to run. With the lid ready, let's do some individual component testing on this washing machine here. You can use the surface sheet if you need to to help your system out if it is slightly different than this one, but most are the same. We're going to reset the control knob by turning it counterclockwise to the 12 o'clock position, then enter the code for diagnostics again. We are going to then turn the knob counterclockwise three times until the spin and done lights are on, then press start to enter the manual component test system. Press start and the lid lock should turn on. If it does not, it's likely bad and failing to turn on and you'll need to replace the lid switch. We're going to turn the dial nine times until we get to the combination showed, which is to activate the low spin mode according to our manual. The lid lock must be engaged for this to work though. Lift the lid and then press the start button to run a manual attempt of the basket to spin. You should hear noises from the unit attempting to shift into spin mode. It should then begin a slow spin mode. This part's dangerous, so again, keep your hands and belongings away from the unit while it does this, unless it's a Nickelback CD. If you don't hear any clicking noises, then it's possible the shift actuator is bad. If you hear clicking noises, but the unit fails to spin at all, it could be the motor, splutch system, belt, or capacitor. Now, if it does spin, but it doesn't spin very fast, or it takes a very long time to spool up to spin fast, then it could be the capacitor. Once the unit slows down, we can exit the mode out simply by pressing and holding the start button for 3 seconds and it should exit out of all the diagnostics so we then can proceed to the next sets of tests. Now we want to go underneath the unit to inspect a few components. You want to lock the washer top down before we get there, so you'll need to pull the top of the machine towards the front, then push down, then push to the back of the washing machine. On this machine though, it didn't quite want to lock on the left side, so I did have to work with the unit a little bit because the sides were not square with each other. Next, since we are going to tilt the machine on its back, you want to use some tape to secure the lid in place. We use a lot of masking tape at our shop because it won't leave any sticky residue on the unit. It also works great for cheap price tags too. Typically here, you'd want to just lean the washer back at a 45 degree angle to work on it. But for video purposes, we're going to lay it all the way back to get a better view of what's underneath the washing machine. Before we remove the cover, note how clean this unit is underneath and around the gear case. One major thing to look for before and after you remove this cover, which comes off with a 5 16 hex head screwdriver, is the presence of either green or blackened transmission oil. If the gear case is leaking oil due to it going bad, it's very possible that it could cause the unit to start slipping within the transmission and would require a new gear case. This is very infrequent but something to note because we had it happen on a washing machine within three days of shooting this video. Once the cover is off, these are the components that we want to look at. First, you have the shift actuator, which could be maroon or it could be black, and honestly, this is the most frequent part to go bad, causing the unit not to spin. Next, the motor, which provides power to the washer. These go bad, but it's rather rare. Sometimes the belt could be damaged or it could have slipped off, and this would cause the unit certainly not to spin or agitate, and if it's damaged, you do want to replace it. The splutch kit handles the unit agitating and spinning as well, and sometimes this unit can strip out or have other damage to it. Then we have the capacitor here, which we kind of went over already. And since we're down here, there's also the water pump that pumps the water out of the unit. If your washer doesn't drain or spin, it's quite possible the drain pump is the issue, not a component resolving in the spin mode. Now let's go over some things that could prevent the unit from spinning. First off, the splutch kit. Try to spin it with your hand and see if the metal retention nut is loose and needs tightened by trying to spin the round pulley. There should be very little play with this splutch. Likewise, the belt should move the motor and splutch assembly easily without any issues. If either of these items looks to be loose or damaged, 
replace the belt or splutch assembly, or simply tighten up the nut on the splutch if that is simply loose. If you need to remove the belt, simply pull the belt away from the washer while rotating the splutch pulley. This trick works on pretty much any belt driven washer that I've dealt with. This will further let you investigate the splutch as it shouldn't have very much play when trying to rotate it without a belt. If you have much play on it, Further than what you see in the video, tighten the nut up to see if that will fix the splutch play, and again, if that doesn't work, replace it. Let's test the motor and see if it's bad. You're going to need a multimeter, and you can do this while the motor is mounted to the washer, but I had a spare one here at my shop to make it easier to see. Set your multimeter to ohms resistance, and you'll want to test the second and fourth wires which are white and red. Your multimeter should see between 3 and 5 ohms of resistance on most models of motors like this. Next, move the multimeter leads to the third and fourth wires, which are yellow and red. You should get between 6 and 9 ohms of resistance. If either number or range is way outside of these values, the motor is bad and the likely culprit of why your washer is not spinning properly. Do note that the resistance value can change slightly depending on the motor type on these style washers. Always consult your service manual for variations depending on if you have the third or quarter horsepower motor. Now let's look at two major styles of shift actuators you could find on a Maytag washer. A very common way of knowing one is bad is the presence presence of dirt or other contaminants in the shifter's housing like you see on this one. To test it, we're using ohms resistance on a multimeter and we are testing the 5th and 6th pins. Your first goal should be to get the multimeter leads on the right pins, which in this case is upside down. Once you get the leads on the right pins, you should get a resistance value of between 2000 and 3500 ohms. This unit both looks bad and tests bad as it's getting only half an ohm. The black shift actuator looks and tests the exact same way, but the Molex configuration is a bit different. Yet again, you're going to be testing the 5th and 6th pins on the actuator for a resistance value of 2000 to 3500 ohms. I know this isn't the best angle, but you can clearly see on the multimeter this one tests good at 2.19k ohms, so it's a working actuator. Know that the black ones are not compatible with the harness of a maroon one, so you need to use the exact actuator, but Maytag has come out with one that has has a cross compatible harness as well. When it comes to capacitors, the best way to discover that one is bad is visual inspection. Most of the time when a capacitor has gone bad, there is physical damage on the capacitor and it's warped significantly in one area. There are three types of capacitors here that you could see on a washing machine and they all pass what would be a visual inspection. Before testing with a multimeter, discharge the capacitor by touching both metal leads with a screwdriver. You may see a spark or hear a pop, but at least for these, nothing really happened. Make sure the screwdriver has a plastic insulated handle, and I'm using a dry rag as well here, just for fun. To test a capacitor with a multimeter, set the unit to ohms resistance if it's a cheaper model like this one. Typically, the resistance should increase until it goes back to OL or open line. But if you have a nicer multimeter, there will be a specific capacitor function that will tell you quickly if the capacitor works or not. Check both terminals with each multimeter lead to make sure that you've tested it the right way with the standard ohms test. I'll tell you though that even the ohms test is very inaccurate, and if you have the nicer multimeter with the cap test, it'll make the step far more definitive. I'll have a link to a nicer multimeter in the description that does have that test because it's time I really should upgrade in these videos myself. We've gone through all of the different components I wanted to show you for this machine and hopefully you found what was wrong and are going to replace it. One thing that you absolutely have to do when you do successfully replace the component is recalibrate the machine. This will tell the machine that you've installed something new and it needs to reset all modes and options on it so it will run successfully. You don't want to install anything, a control board, a shift actuator, a hub, nothing in this machine without recalibrating. It's very easy to do. So let's go real quick to show you how to recalibrate the machine. It's again, similar to error codes and everything else. First off, we want to get into diagnostics simply by turning it back to the normal setting, three to the right, one to the left, one to the right and you'll see all the lights come up. This is actually a different washer than the one we did the video on. I thought about this after I'd filmed everything. So we're gonna go four clicks to the right until the rinse is set, and then we're going to hit the start button, and that's going to begin the reset procedure or the recalibration feature. It's going to start flashing all the lights sequentially, and it's going to take about three to four minutes to reset. Make sure that the washing machine is plugged in and ready to run because it will run the pump, it will run the lid lock, it will run everything in the machine to reset it fully to get it ready with the new parts that you've installed. 
and there we go. It's going to run for the next few minutes, so let's go ahead and start talking where to get your parts from and then finish the video out. If you do find that you need to buy a replacement part, make sure to confirm the part works for your washing machine before you buy it. Because even if your washer looks like the one in the video, it could use different parts from the machine that we have in the video. Check for links in this video's description for factory parts with one year replacement warranties. It may help you out. Hopefully all the ideas we gave you today on the washing machine will help you fix why it's not spinning. We ended up going over seven or eight different possible problems between the diagnostic system and the physical components. If you find anything that was bad in the machine, you definitely want to replace it because that's most likely the culprit. Now, if you can't find anything wrong with the machine, there's probably a 10% chance that we didn't cover it in this video. And at this point, you may need to call a technician or look for a new washing machine because the fix may be pretty obscure. But make sure to check the description and the comments below because usually we have updates to these different machines and videos with extra knowledge and information. And I hope you like and subscribe to the page. Have a great day, guys.